Hello everyone, hope that you're doing well. Now today we're looking at this 2023 BJC General Science Paper 2. Please remember for start the examination, write your school number, candidate number, initials, and surname. Also, please go through the instructions carefully to ensure that you understand each instruction. And if you have any questions or queries, please talk to your examiner. Let's go into question number one. Question number one reads, study the diagrams of various cells and then answer the questions which follow. Now we have labelings for all of these parts. And so for the plant cell, we have the cell wall, which is you. T is the chloroplast. P is the cytoplasm for both cells. We have the nucleus. We have the vacuole. And we have cell membrane. Now for part A, it's to give the name of two structures labeled T and U that are found in the plant cell, but not in the animal cell. So T is the chloroplast and U is the cell wall. For A part 2, is a state of function of structures T and U. So structure T, which is our chloroplast, it is used to produce food for the plant by the process of photosynthesis. So generally it carries out photosynthesis to make food. For U, structure U, which is the cell wall, it used to protect the cell and maintains the shape of the cell. And for part three, is to explain why R is larger in plant cell than in the animal cell. And just to remind you that R is the vacuole. So the thing is that is that plants will store more water, hence they require a larger vacuole. And you need, and you need to know that vacuole used to store water, food, and waste. For part B, it said it's the diagrams show examples of specialized plant cells. And we have guard cell, we have palisade cell, we have phloem, we have the root ear cell, and xylem. Now, this part of the question asks us to identify the cell from the diagram that best fits each function. And for one, it absorbs minerals by increasing the surface area, and that is the root ear cell. Transport water and mineral salts from roots to leaves, and that is the xylem vessel, actually, or cell that they have. And Part three is that allow dissolves dissolve sugars to move from one cell to another. And this is the dissolved sugar that they're talking about right there is actually sucrose. And so this is phloem. For part four, allows gas exchange and controls water loss within the leaf, and that is guard cell. And the last one is to absorb light so that photosynthesis can take place, and that is the palisade cell. All right, so that ends question number one. For question number two, it said, matter exists in three states. Study the diagram and answer the questions in the spaces provided. And it said, name the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And it said, give the correct chemical formula for the substance shown in the diagram. If you notice, we have ice, and then we have liquid, and then we have a gas. And so you say water vapor. So the correct formula for water here is H2O. For part C, you see the diagram shows the term evaporate, um, shows the term evaporating. It's to explain what happens when a substance is evaporating, and this is that the substance is changing from liquid to gas. For part D, it's that after taking a hot shower, you notice that your bathroom mirror fogged up. Identify the change of state occurring in the bathroom, and the change here is gas to liquid. And now this work is to explain what causes this mirror to fog or the mirror to fog. And simply because the gas particles lose heat from the water vapor and condense into liquid. The liquid falls onto the mirror, right, causing, this is supposed to be causing, so this is supposed to be a G right here, is it causing it to fog, all right? For part E, it's a metal element and a non-metal element exists as liquids at room temperature. It's a name the liquid metal element and the liquid non-metal element. So liquid metal element is mercury. Mercury exists at liquid at room temperature as a metal and a non-metal layer is bromine that exists as a liquid at room temperature. For question number three, say the diagram shows different kinds of magnets and I want to observe them quite carefully. It's a name the magnets E to H. Well, E and H. And so E is a barb magnet and H is a horseshoe magnet. It's a given name of, give the name and letter of the naturally occurring magnet and the name is loudstone and letter is J. 
For part C, so name the poles of name the poles on a magnet, and we have north and south poles. All right, and it said the direction of the magnetic field and the magnet is from, and it moves from north into south. For part E, it says a student set up an experiment to investigate the behavior of magnets. It says use the diagram to answer the questions. And we have X and we have Y. So it says describe, the, describe how the magnets will behave at X and Y. So notice that X and Y you have not going to south, so they, they will attract and go closer together. But however, at Y, north and north, so they will repel. And as you should know that like poles will repel and unlike poles will attract. All right, for the next question, here now it is part two. It's to explain the final position of the magnet when it is allowed to suspend naturally. And once the magnet is suspended naturally, then what will happen here is that the North Pole will line up with the North Pole of the Earth. And for part three, it's to describe what happens to a magnet when it is broken in half. And so what will happen here, it will form two separate magnets and they will have their separate poles or the correct poles, north and south. So each of them will have their north and south poles. All right, so question number four. So the diagram shows different ways of, um, different ways that heat can travel. All right, and it said name the method of heat transfer in the diagram labeled L, M, and N. And L is pointing to the pot itself, which is the metallic part of the pot. And so that is conduction. M point to these lines, the arrows going up and down, which mean the movements of the water bubble. And that will be convection. And N is radiation. For part B, it's a steady difference between a conductor and an insulator of heat. And a conductor allows heat to travel through it, while an insulator does not allow heat to pass through it. And here's a name of substance that is a conductor of heat, and you can name any metal. So we just say metals as a general name. And so some examples would be like steel, aluminum, and copper, etc. Once it's a metal. For part D, it says diagrams show apparatus that can be used to investigate the effect of heat on solids. All right, and it said here, matter of fact, just observe first. You see, notice you see a ring, and the ball can go through the ring at W and Z. It is unable to go through. It's explain why the ball does not pass through the ring in Z. And simple because when heat is applied, the ball will expand because the particles start to move further apart. And then now for part two, is explain why, explain fully what can be done in the experiment to allow the ball to pass through the ring at Z. And what it can do here is to cool the ball to remove heat, and cooling will cause the ball to contract to its original size. For question number five, it says, diagram shows a food web found in a Bahamian ecosystem. Use it to help you answer the questions, and you're going to observe carefully the diagram. And then the first five questions, they complete the table by filling the missing information. And you want to look here for a carnivore. An example of carnivore could be anything that eating another animal. So the small fish, which is eating the crab. We can have the mullet, and we also can have the lionfish as well. And we can also have the egret. All right, so any of those will work. And then here they have the seagrass, and, the exam and seagrass is the example of a producer because it makes its own food. For part B, so the diagram shows detritus, which is produced when leaves fall from the tree and settle at the bottom of the water. Name the kind of organism that consumes detritus, and that is a bacteria or what we call decomposer. And for part C, it's a name the ecosystem shown in the diagram, and that is a mangrove ecosystem. You can see the mangrove plants, and also they also label it as mangrove. So it's a mangrove ecosystem. For part D, it's other than being a nursery for many marine animals, state one major benefit of this ecosystem to the Bahamas. And one, it filters runoff water. It used to absorb water and prevents flooding. Also, to break waves from hurricanes. For part E, it said the, the borrowing crab in the diagram is an arthropod. State one visible feature from the diagram that allows you to know it is an arthropod. And the obvious structure on the crab is that it has a hard outer shell, or what they call a hard outer skeleton, which is correct name is exoskeleton, hard exoskeleton. Define the term biodiversity, and biodiversity is a large group of different species in a specific ecosystem which means you have many different kinds of organisms. 
And for G, it said the organism labeled A in the diagram is not native to the ecosystem. It's a name organism A, and it is a lionfish. You could go back to the diagram and you see that the lionfish is A. All right. And then it's a state the name given to the organism that, that are not native to an ecosystem. And the name given to those organisms, they are called invasive. Part three said describe one negative effect caused by organism A on this ecosystem. And any invasive organism will eat other organisms rapidly and can cause them to become endangered. And the greatest negative thing is also they have no natural predators. So they will just strive and survive rapidly and keep on producing. Last question is the diagram shows part of the, of the digestive system. It said draw a line to label the stomach on the diagram. And the stomach is right here. I never put that on. I just put on that line right now. So we need a line to say what the stomach is. And the stomach is right here. Let me see if that will work now. Uh, let me draw that on real quick. So the stomach is right here at this point. All right. This is the stomach. All right. I know. Well, it's not working. Let me highlight the stomach right here. Right. That's the stomach right there. I'm going to highlight it. So you just put a line. So the stomach is that structure that I like. All right. So that works. All right. There's a stated function of the stomach. And the stomach is the chemical breakdown proteins. But part C says so stomach is acidic. Give the name of the acidic of the acid found in the stomach, and that is hydrochloric acid. The symbol is HCl, uppercase H, uppercase C, lowercase l. It's a write the number one to five to show the correct path of food through the parts of the digestive system. The first one has been done for you. So the mouth is the first part, followed by the esophagus, then the stomach, then the small intestine, then the large intestine. Part E is a state the, state the products of the, of the digestion of the nutrients shown. So carbohydrates will break down to glucose, fats will break down to fatty acids and glycerol, proteins will break down into amino acid. F is the digestion of starch begins in the mouth. Name the enzyme that breaks down starch in the mouth and that is salivary amylase. And the final question is to name the enzyme that breaks down fats and this is lipase. All right, thank you for watching and good luck on the examination. Take care and we'll talk soon.